Okay, well, good evening, everybody. It's cold and it's rainy. I usually teach this course in the summer and it's hot and... Uh, but anyway, that's all right. Uh, enough about the weather. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Advanced Programming with Java here at Portland State University. Um, here's what tonight's going to look like. So first off, uh, we'll do what I call Prime Minister's Questions. This is a... Well, I like to begin the class with Q&A, some questions that might come up from you uh, during the week. Um, I'll share some observations that I've had also. Um, then we'll uh, dive back into our, uh, our, our TDD exercise with uh, the student program to uh, see a little bit more about test-driven development. Uh, we've got a lot of information to cover, uh, sort of mechanics of or related to your projects. Very important stuff. We'll talk about testing and documenting and submitting. Um, then I'll uh, talk about project two, which is assigned tonight and due in two weeks. Uh, and along the way, we'll talk about uh, continuous integration and how all of that works. So uh, a lot of good, good stuff on the, uh, the agenda tonight. First off, um, what can I tell you? How was your week? Uh, what did you learn? Any questions that you have uh, before, uh, you know, during this first week? Yeah? For project one, looking at the unit tests, there's one where you have know, a constructor for just a flight with no arguments. Yes. OK. Is that supposed to be valid? Or Ah, okay. Tests to not have that. I Good have question. Flight, no flight test. Um, for for this assignment, for this first assignment, that's correct. Uh, so so yeah, what happens is that uh, if in in Java, if your source code doesn't provide a multi-argument constructor, there is an implicit zero argument constructor, and that's what's being tested. Um, actually, it's up to you in terms of how many uh, constructor arguments your flight has. I think as your, you know, your, your intuition is telling you, it's like, listen, it's got all these required fields, it should probably be in the constructor. Yep, that's probably what you want to do. Okay, so we can change the unit tests? Yes, okay, okay. so yeah, we'll talk more about testing, but basically uh, your tests can do whatever they need to do to get you the code coverage that, uh, that I require. Good question of Project One. Um, let's see here. Uh, be brave. Uh, who who has gotten uh, the, uh, the the projects created? Well, I've got Project One created and the cones created. Okay. Uh, any of you have any friends that might have run into some problems or anything that you might want to you know, tell me about? I Heard something from, from a person that knows a person about some challenges? Yes? I've been having a bit of trouble using Maven, and I'm not quite sure how to use it. Okay, so yeah, getting started with Maven. A couple yeah. things that, I, that I've seen. Uh, first of all, there's uh, uh, just, just running like the, the Maven W script, uh, making sure that it's an executable script. So if you're running on uh, Unix, so like Linux machines or like a Mac or something like that. Um, making sure that you've done the, I'll see if I can find it here real quick, the chmod, oops. Right, so before you can run Maven, you need to chmod it um, and then uh, execute it. If you don't have your path set up to have the current working directory on the path, and you say dot slash. So there, there's like, oh, just getting Maven to run in the first place. Okay, so maybe if you've done that, um, there's, oh, I, uh, has anybody run Maven and then run into something weird, like some problem or something? Yep, do you remember what it is off the top of your head? Uh, so, it was a little while ago, um, I was trying to build a prototype for, for Okay. And there was something about the target which was wrong. Ah, like, okay, so like the, um, like the JVM target what was wrong. Okay, so then that might speak to the version of Java that you're using. Okay, and so then, actually, do I have, you know, I really don't talk about that much here. I have some of it in the slides. You need to make sure you're using the right version of Java. Um, and so let's see, and there, <coughs> the version of, Ch of Java is, is changing a lot. I'm using Java 11 here, I think, on the PSU machines. That would be Java 12, uh, but it needs to be more than, like, Java 8. I think there are a lot of environments that are still um, run with Java 8. So uh, make sure you've got the right version of Java uh, on your command line, on your path, and then also make sure that your Java home also points to a modern uh, JVM or a modern JDK. 
Uh, Java home is the environment variable that the Maven script will use to find your, your Java development kit. So a couple things like that. Um, that reminds me, uh, so I, I, I have a Slack channel and I think I've received, I think I've got about 25 or 26 of you on here. There are more people than that enrolled in the course. In order to find out, get the link to the, the Slack channel, you need to run the survey program. So please, please, please run the survey program. And what that'll, that, that, that tells me who you are, that'll give me an email address for you. Um, I'll then send you a link to, I'll invite you to the Slack channel, um, and then you'll be able to participate. Because um, there have been a bunch of questions like this that have come up on the Slack channel, uh, and that's the best way to not only reach out to me, but also uh, learn from your fellow students. So there's making sure your environment's right. Yeah, you have a question? In the syllabus, go all the way down to the bottom. Talked about it last week. Um, sorry, syllabus is here last week. Or syllabus. So log into the PSU machines and run this command. And so then what that does is it runs uh, a program that asks you some questions about yourself, takes those answers, uh, puts them in an XML file, emails them off to the grader, I then extract that, uh, import you into my grade program. So this is how I record your grades um, and, and know who you are. Uh, use this to contact you, email, fi email you files, all sorts of good stuff like that. Um, and also, when I see a new survey response come in, uh, I'll send you the link to the, uh, to, the, to the Slack. You only need to run this once. Every year I have at least one student who's like, oh, every assignment I run the survey program. Nope, only to do it once. Uh, it's cool. Um, but, but you have to do it once, so once and only once. Any other challenges people have uh, encountered, maybe overcome, maybe haven't, um, getting, uh, sort of just getting off the ground with Project One and the cones? Yeah? Yeah, I'm looking at the setting up cones. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at the PDF you have for it. Yeah. Oh, does that still have? I thought I took that out. I might, you know, I might have taken it out. I meant to, you know, uh, yeah. You don't need to do that. That's what the script does. So I need to, I need to get rid of that. Okay, so Darn it! I thought I had that fixed. I'm on Windows, just run the command. Yeah, the create cones .cmd on Windows. And right, and that'll, yeah, that that basically does the same thing here. Saves you a lot of typing and a lot of uh, typos and things like that. Yep. <laughs> yep. Sorry, I gotta get rid of that. I got rid of any other assignments. Cool. Uh, I strongly encourage you to make sure that you can get your environment up and running. Even though the assignment isn't due until next week, you don't want to start at the last minute, or you don't want to find out like three days before it's due. It's like, wow, oops, I don't have you know the right version of Java. I don't have Maven working and things like that. Um, so that stuff is super important. Uh, yeah. Where's the uh, POA? I'll talk about that uh, tonight. Yep, that's part of the documentation. Okay. Um, I think all of you last week you'd, sent, you'd done a little bit of Java. Um, what's it like getting back into Java? Uh, maybe some of you have been doing it regularly. Uh, if you haven't seen it in a little while, what are some of the things that uh, you're like, oh right, maybe you didn't understand it the first time, or uh, anything I can explain to you about the, the language, for instance, or some of the things you've encountered so far in Project One? Nothing? Yeah, that's cool. That's all, good. all good. Okay. Anything else from last week that... Talk about Maven, language, JUnit. Talk more about unit testing and things like that. Okay. Oh, um... Ha is everybody... I mean, I'm just curious. Is everybody using GitHub? Are there people that are just like, eh, no, it's not for me? Or is everybody feeling pretty comfortable with it? Okay, cool. Uh, please, uh, you know, uh, let me know if there's anything in my uh, instructions here that is either especially incorrect or anything that's unclear. Um, I've only been using uh, this for it's only my second time using it, so there's probably a lot of refinement that can still be done to uh, to make it perfect. Lecture notes, on the other hand, those things are ancient; they're obviously perfect. Okay, <laughs> all right. All right. Nice. Okay. Um, 
Let's do a little bit of coding. So, oops, close, close, fantastic. Okay, so last week we started writing this student program, this Project Zero, and it's kind of like your uh, your assignments. Uh, the whole idea is that you've got the student class and you've got a main method. Uh, and the ultimate test case here is that when you give it these command line arguments, it prints this out. So that's like the ultimate goal. And what we've been doing is we've explored, we've been exploring how to get to that goal through uh, test room development by working in small chunks and doing a little bit of verification along the way. Uh, sorry, and doing little pieces of verification along the way. Um, let's see here. So when we last left our uh, dashing hero, uh, he was trying to figure out how to implement the two-string method. Oh yeah, with all the different uh, classes and stuff. So let's see here. We It's been a while, so I want to make sure that all my tests are still running, so I'll run my tests again. Run all my <coughs> tests there. Okay, cool. Everything passes, but there's still a couple ones that are ignored. So let's see here, this three classes, it has the comma and the and is ignored, uh, which is maybe sort of the same as oh, this. No, that's, that's clearly wrong, it should be three there. So let's run this one and uh, see where we're at. Honestly, I haven't looked at this in a week. So, uh, okay, it's failing and... Yes, yeah, thank you for letting me know. I'll make that a little bit bigger. And let's see here, I can make this bigger too. <laughs> Yep, I don't think I can make this over here bigger. Nope. Uh, but all this text I can make bigger. Okay, so two to student dot two string. Oh yeah, right. Create a string builder. You append the number of classes suffix, and then append class names. Ah, here we go. Oh right, yeah, there was this. So like, how do we deal with this? Um, and how do we get it right? Because right now we're failing because instead of saying, see, expected three classes, one class, another class, and yet another class, we got one class, no comma, another class, and yet another class. Well, I th I, okay, so I lied. I did, I did think about this a little bit. Um, I... You know, the, the only, like, good solution that I could think of was, like, special casing one class, two classes, and then everything else. Um, any brighter ideas out there? Is there, like, a more general way to, to do this? It doesn't seem like so, yeah, hokey. Separating two from everything else because there's no comma, right? Yeah. So right. Yeah. So it seems like you know one is is one, and then two is just like the first one and the second one, and then the third is the one where you have all the commas and the and and the whole thing. So I don't know. Let me give that a try and just sort of see what it looks like. Um, it'll probably be kind of ugly, but let's see. So, uh, I think what I want to do is I want to say number of classes equals this dot classes, oops, dot size. I want to say if number of classes equals one, then I want to say sb dot append uh, this dot classes. Oh, let's see here. And this dot classes ended up being a set, and so then, uh, I think I have to do this, I have to say iterator, next, and that presumably that won't blow up. Famous last words, right? So if number of classes is two, then say, uh, then we need to get the iterator. Let's not copy this, because I'm kind of lazy right now. Iterator. I'm going to extract that into a variable called sure iterator, whatever. So the iter dot next, and then sb dot append and 
and then, oops, no, and then, uh, actually, it's this guy again. And then otherwise, then let's see here. Then I think it's, it's basically this, sort of. Oops. So I iterate over all of them, and let's see here. I don't need this because it's we know it's greater than one. Uh, if it doesn't have next, then it's the last one. Otherwise, say and last one, and I need to put the comma in. Now let's see here. If it's not the last one, it should have a comma after it. So is this right? Maybe? Gee, how can I tell? I can run my tests. Seriously, right? I mean, this is the nice thing about the tests. It, you know, it, it allows you to, I don't really want to say be lazy, but I want us to be, be, relay, be, be lazy. Um, uh, it, it basically, no, it's, it's not so much lazy as it is, it, it protects me from doing something dumb and it gives me rapid feedback, right? It lets me know whether or not I've messed something up. So let's try running this one again. Let's see here. Okay, well, I didn't get it exactly right, but let's see here. Um, one class, another class, yet another class. Oh, no, no, actually, sorry. I, I have the logic backwards. I want to say if it does have next, then append the comma. Hey, and it passed. Huh. Oh, my God. Okay, so now I want to go back to my student tests. I want to run all of my tests again. No, oh, that was fast. Looks like they all they all got it. Okay, I've still got a couple of ignored tests here. Uh, oh, that, that's like the big one. Example student from the assignment. I'm, I know we're not ready for that one yet. Uh, Dave's classes contains Dave's two string contains his classes. This one might be ready now. Let's uh, let's give it a try. Let's run it. Oh, what doesn't it like? Let's see here. It contains taking three classes, algorithms, operating systems, Java. Java, algorithms, and operating systems. Oops, I thought, I thought we fixed the order so that it did the right thing. Is my algorithms, operating systems, and Java. Algorithms, uh, huh. I wonder why it doesn't print them in the right order. Well, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I got a bunch of classes, a bunch of um, a bunch of uh, code working. I kind of want to commit that because I know it's a known good state. So I'm going to revert this change here. So in uh, just a moment. So um, in IntelliJ, when you see something like this, this is uh, this says, "Oh, hey, there's a change to that line uh, in revision control." So I made a change, and it's different from what's in Git, um, and so it tells me that. So I can revert it by clicking on it and then saying this little like undo arrow. That'll oops. There was a, and then that'll bring it back. So now if I run it again, it should be ignored. Okay, and now if I run them all, it should be okay. Yes, question. Um, so the classes are stored in a set, right? And I remember reading something once about sets not having a guaranteed order with everything. That's so, correct. And I thought by using a linked hash set. So oh, let's go, okay. well, I don't know, right? But it clearly doesn't seem to be the case. So what order? I thought linked hash set um, gave me, uh, I thought linked hash set uh, guaranteed the order, but maybe not. So your hash table and linked list implementation of set interface, a predictable iteration order. Iteration difference between a hash set and a doubly linked list. Huh. Huh. So, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a, well, first of all, so th this is still curious, but what I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to check my changes into version control. Uh, let's see here. Uh, implemented the logic for um, uh, printing the 
classes taken by a student. Push that up to GitHub. And now we're going to look at this. Now, yeah, I thought a linked hash set it says predictable, predictable iteration order. So it's talking about reinsertion. I'm just skimming this because constant time performance, not synchronized, fail fast. Yeah, so, huh. So I'm going to take a quick look at my code. Try to figure out what's going on here. So those three were entered in that way. So algorithms, operating system, Java. Oh, I know. <laughs> I didn't change it for here. Yeah, no, that would do it. Oh, yeah. Huh. I know. Okay, well, let's now let's try that and, uh, and get it working. Right? I mean, it's stuff like that, right? And, and actually, so... You know what? Uh, I'm going to confess something here. For a moment, I thought, oh, maybe the link lit, you know, linked hash that implementation is wrong and I found a bug. No, 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 no. That, I mean, that's that, right. You know, uh, uh, I'm not that good. And, uh, and, and it's like, that's one thing that I've just had to train myself over the years. That's like, you know what? It's probably your fault. It's probably not the guys that wrote the Java Collections API because they've had like, you know, billions of lines of code, uh, you know, tested against that, against that over the years. And sure enough, it was a, you know, a silly mistake on my part. Um, and, uh, you know, it's the thing that luckily I had a, uh, a unit test that told me that, All right? So it was a bug in the test, true, but it, uh, it you know, it, it helped me, uh, Help me figure that out. So okay, so now if I ignore that and I run it, okay, that passes. Cool. Uh, so that was red. Now I'm green. I want to refactor it. So I am going to. Well, actually, you know, I was thinking about maybe putting this into its own method, like you know, create hash set or something. But you know what? I really don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Great, so now I'm going to uh, check that in. Um, and so then, uh, oh yeah, yeah, fixed bug in test. Uh, well, fixed, fixed test that wasn't using the right collection. Where do we go next? What's the next test case? Now that I got all of my test cases working, what should my next one be? Main? We're going to get there. And I don't want to get there quite yet. Um, well, and actually, no, no, I want to explore this a little bit because maybe it is the right thing to do. Maybe the right thing to do is to start working on, on my main. Um, and this is one of those decisions that you need to make when writing your, when writing your code. So I've, I've fundamentally got two types of, of code. I've got uh, what the professionals call business logic, which is like all of the stuff with the, uh, with, 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 the, with, with the student. Granted, all it is is like, you know, printing out the two string and um, we're doing a little bit of data validation on what's coming in. And then I've got the user interface, which is the, is the command line parsing. Um, this is one of the things that, you know, I, I've sort of vacillated back and forth on over my career. It's like, is it better to start with the user facing stuff and work sort of uh, front to back in your program? So you've always, you know, you're sort of always testing, you've always got something that the user can, uh, can work with. Or is it better to say, listen, I, I want to understand my domain, I want to explore my domain, and so I'm going to write all of sort of like the back end, the business logic code first, and then merely expose that in the, in the UI. You know, when I write visual UIs, I like to start with the UI code first and then figure out the back end logic. Um, in this case, though, I, I kind of, we, we've been starting the other way around, right? We started with just writing unit tests against our student class, ignoring the main method. Um, I kind of want to go a little bit further on this because what we'll be able to do then is we'll have what we believe to be a fully functioning student class um, 
with all of its uh, functionality and unit tests for that. And then when we write the uh, well, then when we write the main method, we'll be pretty confident that the student class that we're calling is rock solid. So if there's a problem, it's probably in the main method, not someplace in the student class. So I think that's how I want to approach this particular project. You might approach your projects uh, differently, and certainly like when we start looking at the Android code, uh, you know, th there there could be a completely different story. So. Then to answer your question, I think what I want to do is uh, flesh out more of the student class or of the, the, the domain logic here, um, and then uh, then we'll take on testing main. Because as we'll see um, in sort of the second half of class, um, testing the main method, uh, there's some tools for it, that there's some new tools for it, some new types of tests that you can write that uh, make it possible to do things like test that your, uh, your main method exits correctly. So what other logic is there to the student class? What, what are we missing? Oops. <clears throat> what do we got? Well, actually, it might be a pretty simple answer. Because we have like sort of like the, the, master, uh, the master example that we need to get working. And we wrote a unit test for it. So let's see where we are with this one right now. So if we go and run this test, okay, what do we got? Expected, uh, Dave has all this stuff. Ah, but we don't have the, he says this is too much work. Okay, where do we go next with this one then? Do we have a test for the gender yet? We do? No, we don't. And so therefore, we have not implemented anything, right? If you, if you write your test first, then the answer is no, right? We haven't implemented anything about the, the gender yet because we don't have a test for it. Okay, cool. So let's, let's see here. What is our first test for, for gender? Oops. Um, ah, where's my change? My change is right there. Cool. So I'm going to... Ignore this class again. So that is option command Z on a Mac. Oops. Oh, and it also must have gotten the must have gotten rid of the import also. That was nice of it. Okay, so now gender. Um, oh, actually, the constructor uh, sort of laid out what the I think there are the program accepts three values for, for gender, male, female, and other. Okay, so Okay, so the constructor, okay, well, so then let's see here. Um, what's the first test? Let's test the, the valid gender. So uh, female is a valid gender. Actually, it's probably can create student with female gender. There you go. Okay, so student student equals new student. Let's see here, name student uh, new hash sets. GPA, and then the last one, oops, typing that ahead of myself, and then the last one is it's the gender, okay, and so then female, and uh, I guess that's it, oops. Sure, I just wanted to remove that. Oh, what? Oh, I guess I didn't want to do that. That's what I wanted to do. Meh. Well, I wrote a te test and it passed without doing anything. It doesn't seem very satisfying somehow. I don't get to put on my little red hat and everything like that. Um, oh, it's a valid test case. 
So it will be a test case that will fail. Or should we just make the test case fail? Oh, what if we did something like that? So instead of, what, what if, you know, because really, maybe the, the right way to express the test case isn't so much about the fact that you can create it, but that, because ultimately, what do we use the gender for? Why, why, why do we have a gender? What, what, what is it used for in the program? The pronoun, right, the, the, the gender pronoun. Um, so let's see here. So uh, female student has uh, she pronoun. How about that? And then to a variable called student. And so then student dot get gender pronoun. Oops. And we'll also create that method. Sure. <laughs> no. I don't want it to be a string. Let's have it return null. Because guess what? That'll make everything fail. <laughs> um, assert that student get gender pronoun equal to she. Now when I run it. Hey, good. I get my uh, I get my failure that I like so much. Um, let's do the dumb thing to get to pass. Let's hard code it. <clears throat> nice. Okay, now it passes. Now let's write the next test, which be for male as he pronoun. And it's male, and it should be he. So now this is going to uh, fail, and so now what we need to do is, well, what do we need to do? Um, well, let's just put this into. So I'm going to use refactoring. I'm going to. Uh, so now we need to introduce a field uh, to the class which represents the uh, the gender pronoun. So I'll say refactor extract field. I'm going to call it gender pronoun. Oops, eh, I didn't want to. No, that's okay. Don't want that. Um, instead, let's see here. Eh, it doesn't work yet, right? I haven't done anything with it. Okay, well now I get null. Okay. Uh, okay, well now we need to compute the value of gender pronoun. Okay. So now, oh, what do we need to do? We need to say if gender equals female, actually we're doing, yeah, 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 female, then gender pronoun equals she. Put this there because I like doing that. Else, if gender dot equals male, this dot gender pronoun equals he. Now I'm going to resist the urge to say, oh, otherwise do something because I don't have a test for it yet. But I know, as a matter of fact, you know what I should do? I should make uh, leave myself a note here. Uh, um, actually, I was. Now let's go ahead and write it. So let's see here. Public um, unknown uh, gender uh, does, uh, reports an error. Uh, I'll write it later because I don't know exactly what I want to do yet. I'm going to ignore it. But, uh, you know, it's okay to leave. Actually, you really should leave breadcrumbs and notes to your future self because you'd be surprised how much you can forget to sort of in the context which you're getting little things to work or maybe, you know, you get distracted or whatever. So... Uh, like just now, for instance. Okay, I think I did everything right. Uh, my tests will tell me though. Yay! Okay, that one worked. And how about? Oops. Uh, no, I didn't want. To, well, didn't really want to run it under the debugger. Uh, okay, looks like everything passed though. I'm gonna go ahead and hide all the ones that have passed because I'm getting a lot now. It only will show up. It'll show the ignored ones, and I'll show, yeah, show the ignored ones and also any failures. Okay, well that's good. 
Uh, okay then. I've got here. Sure now. He sure. Okay, and so now I need a um an other. Uh, and so then other gendered student, other gendered student has they pronoun. Okay, and that's other, and then on this. So, you know, right, uh, it's, uh, it might be a little ponderous to watch uh, there, but, you know, the whole idea is I'm, I'm taking very little steps and I'm checking myself along the way by running all of my tests. And this way I know that not only do I have stuff working the first time, but it stays working as I make more changes. So I need to go back to my student, add another branch here. Else if gender equals uh, other. So gender <coughs> pronoun equals they. Okay, so that's working too. Excellent. Uh, and so now let's see here. There was other test that we wrote. Unknown gender reports an error. Uh, what, okay, so let's see here. Um, so student with unknown gender. Well, reports an error. Let's be a little bit more specific there. What should it do? Throws exception. What? Legal argument exception. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we could like create our own exception, but now you know what? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see here. I remember how to do that. So you say, oops, you do this, you say uh, unknown, and we expect our test to throw an illegal argument exception. Illegal argument exception dot class. <coughs> That uh, it fails because one wasn't thrown. So let's go back and do this. Say otherwise. Uh, throw new illegal argument exception unknown gender uh, gender. Do that. Run. Okay, that seems to work. Okay, cool. So, okay, well, we got a bunch of tests here. Okay, well, I'm gonna check them in. Oops. Uh, oops, I wanna go to version control. I wanna check both of them in, not just the tests. Okay, and let's see here. So, uh, implemented logic for determining the gender pronoun. Pronoun based on the gender. I did run all of my tests, right? Oops! All just a broke. Uh oh. Oh no! Okay, I forgot to run run my tests. Uh oh, but look, I found out like three seconds afterwards. Um, okay. Let's go back and uh, let's go back and fix all this stuff, I guess. Let's see here. Um, yeah. So we'll just say other. Um, okay, we'll just go through one by one. Find it out that one I fixed. Uh, oh. Oh, you know what? Wait. Capital O other. Huh. You know, actually, oh yeah, the genders are case insensitive. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're all nodding like, yeah, I told you so. Okay, yeah, okay, well, okay. Glad you were paying attention. Okay. Um, okay, okay. Uh, her. Now we need to, so let's see here, because that actually is valid, so what we should really do is, uh, yeah, I guess that's why they're all there. Okay, so let's, let's make sure that, um, oh, Let's just have a test, which is uh, oh, void uh, gender is case insensitive. So I don't know like how deep we need to go here. 
in terms of test cases. Because if I say other, just run that one. Yeah, it said unknown gender other. And so then, uh, okay, here's what, oh, interesting. So I can get it to pass by just saying that. Now, the test passes, but the code's not right, right? Because if I then tried to, uh, you know, and then I can write another failing test, and I should probably get it to pass, too. So, okay, so then it sh this should really be other gender is case insensitive, and then I'll do one for uh, male gender, female gender is case sensitive, case sensitive. female, uh, that should be she. Actually, you know what? I don't even need to test the gender pronoun. No, I probably should. Uh, okay, and so then make this work. And so, you know what? It takes a couple more seconds, and literally you're seeing it's only a couple more seconds, but you know what? This just gives me all the more confidence um, that I've got my code right. Um, and, you know, my experience has been is that Spending a couple more seconds to write another test will save you minutes of debugging when something goes wrong. So, especially as things get more complicated. And here again, at the beginning of the class might not be that complicated, but it'll get more complicated um, as you go along. Believe you me. Okay. So now that I've implemented that functionality, oh, I did something wrong here. Oh yeah. I didn't do this. Okay, so now that one works. Now let's just run them all. All 21 test pass. Test pass. Okay. So, uh, I introduced a bug into my program. I uh, didn't even realize it, right? It's not like I wrote the code wrong, it's that my test cases now were exercising logic that, you know, was ultimately wrong. Um, now, what if after I'd made that change, I decided to like go home for the day or started to work on something else? So, you know, it was time to go read email or something. Um, my code would have been committed and it would have been broken. So, wouldn't it be nice if there was, uh, if I commit my code and instead of relying on me to write my unit test to provide me feedback, there were these little like magic robots off in the sky that ran my code for me. Well, that's what continuous integration is. So, um, one of the nice things about having a uh, consistent reproducible build for your project and having unit tests is that uh, you can then, oh, and having all that code and version control, uh, anybody, uh, especially, you know, a machine, a robot, can go get that code, run the build, and give you feedback on it all in the background, all in sort of a clean room environment where you're not worried about whatever you've done to your you know, local machine in order to get things to work. So uh, in this class, I use a, uh, a, a free um, uh, tool. Oops, couldn't find a pro Oh, yeah. That ain't right. Wait a second. I fixed that, I thought. There you go. It's going to reload. I use a tool called um, Travis CI, Travis Continuous Integration, to... Eh. Sorry, wait a second. I want to make sure I got this working. Oh, I thought I fixed that. Sorry. Uh, here, I'm trying to be so proud of myself here. I'll fix it in a second. Um, Travis, that I've got configured to basically monitor my GitHub repository, and whenever it sees I make, I push up new code to the GitHub repository, it goes, it checks out the code, I've told it how to build the code, it goes and builds the code, and uh, sends me an email if something bad happens. And in this case, something bad happens, it went wrong. But this is out there on the web, it's a completely independent third party that then is taking my code and, and building it for me. Um, and so then it goes and gets the repository, and if I scroll down to the bottom of the log, because there's a whole bunch of stuff there, um, 
it went and ran my Maven build, and sure enough, there are uh, there are all my failing test cases. Uh, and it says, hey, listen, we tried to build your student project, and it failed, and we didn't even bother uh, doing everything else. This is unfortunate. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to uh, commit these changes, which ought to uh, ought to fix it. Uh, fix failing tests by supporting case insensitive uh, genders. Insensitive, can't spell this late at night. It's not even that late at night, anyway. Um, I just can't spell, apparently. Uh, I'll commit this, and then I'll push it up to GitHub. Uh, let's complain, let's complain about a warning. Let's go see what that warning is. Um, at least my test case is probably complaining in my student case here. What doesn't it like? So I know it's got a warning because it's got this little yellow up here. It says one warning found. What is that warning? I hit F2 to go to the next one. Oh, it says that this can be package protected. Okay, fair enough. I'll make it package protected. Now, are you happy now? Okay. I'll go and commit again. Uh, luckily, it remembers my commit message, which is very nice of it. I'll do a commit and push. And now, yep, it'll push it off to GitHub. Okay, good. So it's eh, still thinking about it, still pushing. Okay, there it goes. And then we'll watch this. And pretty shortly, and of course, it'll take longer than I think because somebody's watching, um, it will automatically detect the change and kick off a new build. And it will automatically detect the change and kick off a new build. Maybe. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and so that's what it does, right? So it pulls GitHub. Or actually, maybe you know, maybe these days it's even it even does a push notify from webhooks or something like that, saying, "Oh, look, there's been uh, there's been a change." And so now I can. Let's see here. If I follow the log, what it does, and I'll make it a little bit bigger. The details aren't super uh, important of of uh, of how it does it, but the whole idea is that it provisions a little environment. That has uh, based on a, on how I've configured it. I'll show you how to configure it. It's pretty straightforward. And it does things like, oh yeah, use this version of Java, and uh, then go get the code, and then run the Maven wrapper. And I say, well, the Raven, Maven wrapper is that it takes care of downloading Maven and installing you know, all the right stuff there, and then goes off and runs it. It's um, downloading all of the jar files that it needs. And that's why we're watching all this nonsense go by. Um, and then uh, once it has all of the uh, the the libraries and, uh, and dependencies that it needs, uh, it goes and it runs the project. Well, oh, and, and now it's done. Um, and so then, oops, I thought it did anyway. Oh, I guess it builds all the code, it does a pass building the code, and then it does a pass um, to run the tests also. Uh, it's just the way Travis does it, and that's a fine thing to do. And you can see everything go by. Um, normally you wouldn't watch this, it's all just run in the background. Um, and, uh, oh, good, it passed, and actually it sends you an email saying, hey, your build's passing again. Um, but this is a, a really important concept in software engineering, right? It's yet another safety net that you have. So if you either forget all to run all your tests and accidentally break something, or maybe everything works on, you know, works on my machine, but doesn't work on the, in the clean room environment, you know, there's something wrong, something that needs to be reconciled. The way you configure all of this is that, um, and actually, you've got one of these two in your top-level environment. You've got a .travis.yaml file. Um, and uh, there's actually a lot of configuration you can have. But our projects are comparatively simple. And so you basically tell Travis, Look, I've got a Java project. Um, I want to install this JDK. Um, don't need to have sudo because you're not doing anything uh, terribly interesting. And when you run it, just say, yep, mavenw-verify. And so that will check out the code. I've configured Travis. Uh, let me go. Let's see here. I think I can get the configuration for Yarks. Sorry if anybody has like. Come on. Oh, there it was. If you config. Uh, uh, sorry. How do I go? I go settings. No, actually, it doesn't let you change it. Um, so what, what you can do is uh, let's see here. Well, you, you like click over here, and then it'll list all of your. Uh, GitHub repositories. So when, when you set Travis for the first time, you basically need to give it, you need to tell GitHub, hey, please give Travis permission to like go and look at all your repositories and then uh, get things, uh, you know, and, and clone, clone them, get the code from there. Um, but then once you do, you can just simply add a repository. As you can see, I've got lots of repositories built up over the years uh, here. 
Um, and then what it does is every time that uh, that you run your code, every time sorry, every time you make a uh, you push commits up, you push new uh, revisions up to uh, to GitHub, it will go and build them for you. So it's this nice sort of you know independent you know third party that verifies that all your code still runs. Anyway, super cool. I believe so. I have a public repository. I'm pretty sure Travis supports you know private repositories, and I'm pretty sure there's like a academic license or something that you can get. Um, not required for this course, but maybe something that'll be helpful, you know, or maybe something that you want to leverage, you know, in another course, um, you know, your capstone or or whatever. Um, this is you know really important stuff. Oh, I guess one thing that I still need to figure out is why that little badge wasn't working. Um, that badge was in my README. Uh, I thought I had this fixed. Travis CI. Oh, I see. There was another place I didn't fix it. Actually. Your GitHub, and I don't need to change those. Okay. Oh, it's not consistent. Should we GitHub ID or GitHub user? Anyway. Okay. Now let's try it again. Um, uh, fix Travis badge. Oops. Push. Really? Shouldn't have been. Oh, it did. <laughs> I lost him. Okay. Oops. That was weird. I wonder why it thought that it changed on disk. I wonder if my hard drive is failing. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Anyway, so now when I uh, go back to the repository and I refresh, it says the build's passing, and now when I go to it, it actually goes to the right. Damn it. What is going on here? I don't know if you pushed. Did, oh, did I push? You just committed the last one. Yeah. Uh, good. Push. I did not. Thank you. Wow, pair programming. Hey, you've got to do this. Oh, this is good. I should write all my code in front of you all. There you go. I just like start bringing my code from work now. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't want to see that. I'll turn you off from the profession. Oh my god, that's what you have to work with every day? Anyway. Uh, cool. Anyway, so it'll kick off a new build here in, uh, in a moment. So anyway, so that is uh, continuous integration. Um, that's something that uh, again, it's feedback that you get on your uh, on your work, and you get it rapidly, right? So as you can see, you know, within a matter of a minute or two, uh, it detected that oh wow, I had broken stuff, and then I get rapid feedback. Then I was like, well, hey, I think I fixed it, um, and then yes, ver you know, uh, it'll verify that your stuff still works. Okay, back to our tests. We still have that one test, which is. Uh, is ignored. Let's see here, what do we got? So now we, we did the, oh, we implemented the pronoun, but we didn't add it to the two string. You know, and let's see here, it says, he says this is too much work. Um, we need to implement this, this is too much work stuff. And let's see here, all students say this is, this class is too much work. What do all students say? Oops. Public void, all students say this class is too much work. Uh, says this class is too much work. So if I run that, oh yeah, not implemented yet. Okay, well, simple enough. Return this class is too much work. Nice. Okay, and now let's see here. Uh, now I want to go back 
to my ignored method here, and let's just get this. Let's just drive this to working. So now we'll go to two string, and what do we need to say? We've appended the class names. Then we need to append. Oops. Sp dot append. Uh, I think it's two spaces. Then it's the uh, gender pronoun. Get gender pronoun. Um, and then it's, oops, I think the word says, uh, pen, come on, there you go, pen says, <coughs> says, this class is too much work, speed dot append, uh, that, that, I think that's what it is. Let's try let's try it again. Nice. So that works. And so Okay, everything passes. So uh Let's see here. Oh, and refactoring, you know, the code that we've been writing is pretty simple, even the test stuff, so it's okay that there's not opportunities to refactor. Right? I mean your code will get complex soon enough. I need to worry about it now. Okay, so let's see here. Got the, uh, the fundamental example from the um, assignment working. So I'll commit that. Now I'll take a step back and ponder. Okay, now we haven't tested anything about the main method of the command line, so we're gonna get to that a little bit later. But before, before we sort of put this down, is there any other logic that we should implement from this? Is there anything else that we're missing? Because this is how you know you're done, right? You're done when you can't think of any more test cases to write. When all your codes are refactored and all the tests are passing, you're done. And that's another thing I like about test-driven development. Right, there's not sort of always the question of like, oh, did I test that, or oh, you know, I tested that, you know, using a manual test 10 minutes ago, does it still work? I can't even remember what I was doing. Nope. When everything's automated, you know that everything that was true 10 minutes ago is still true now. But is there anything else that we need to assert to be true about the domain logic, not the, the main method yet? Yeah, I can't think of anything. Can you? Nah. Okay. Well, that's cool. Okay, good deal. Well, hey, we've been at it for an hour. Uh, let's take a quick break. Let's take 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and uh, talk about some of the stuff related to the upcoming assignments.